And welcome back. Now let's see what this new project is I've got going here. Yes, we've got a relay, we've got a couple of power supplies, lots of flashy LEDs. Oh, the FTDI thing, yeah. Okay, let's see where we're going with this project, shall we? So the goal of this project is to control the water pump in this very pond. Uh, not only the pump, but the air pump, that's where all the bubbles are coming from. Um, at the moment, it's all a bit basic. The air pump, that's that big black box you see at the back there. That's the uh, mains-driven uh, air pump. And that wire next to it, that one there, that's the 12 volt supply for the submersed um, pond pump. So at the other end of the garden, so right down there, you will see the actual device. And it comes all the way up here underneath in this sort of tube conduit in there and through the wall of my workshop. To the other side there which then goes into this um yeah there, there's the wires coming out from that white conduit conductor oops um yeah ready for a connection at the moment they're just hacked into this little manual time clock it's all a bit basic really it works but you know it's a little bit basic isn't it we want something a bit better so the aim is to have a device like this as you can see it's a nice little custom pcb a couple of power supplies on there um, a few flashy LEDs. Well, it all makes it look good, doesn't it? Um, ESP32 running the whole thing. There's my little dual um, segment, uh, dual seven segment display. And at the top, you can see it's all nicely um, wired up. And the the mains is all over there on the right hand side. So the two power supplies, the two fuses, and all the mains connectors are at the top and to one side. And everything else is. Um, nice low voltage yeah that's that's my little dual seven segment display and this bit down here that's blank at the moment that displays the countdown when you manually switch it off uh, via your phone so let me just switch it off and um, let me get the phone display up there we are i've hit turn pump off and we get 10 minutes in which to feed the fish yeah it's it's all pretty um slick and basic Okay, let's have a little discussion then how I designed this, why I designed it the way I did, and, and any issues along the way. I want to give a big shout out to PCB Way, PCB prototype the easy way. More interestingly though, is that they're starting their PCB Way fifth PCB design contest. Yes, we can get a free Pico just for entering. Let's see what that means for us. As you can see, they've got a huge website all about this. So let's scroll down and see what we can find. So for the timeline, the project design runs from the 1st of September to the 31st of December 2022. Then they'll be reviewed throughout January. All right, and the result will be on the 6th of February 2023. And that time will whiz around sooner than you can think. So get your project in quick. Now, what are the themes? Now there are two specific themes here. There's one for next generation hardware, home automation, wearable stuff, or uh, earth friendly, so eco type projects. And if your project doesn't fit into either of those, there's the free theme where um, you can do whatever you like. The first prize is $1,500 in cash plus a $200 coupon. I'll let you read those in your own time. So if you need some inspiration as to what sort of project you can submit, have a look at the submissions bit of this page and uh, just see the high quality of projects already submitted and uh, make sure you get your project in. Remember, it's got to be in by the end of December 2022. Good luck with that and let's hope you win. PCB way, always worth a look. Go and have a look now. Right, now this is right at the beginning of the project that I'm recording this because I've got all the components. As you can see, a few of them are scattered about here. The rest of them are in this, in this box here. Um, I designed the PCB. There, there's the paper version. And lo and behold, here's the real version that arrived today. Really quick from PCB Way. Once again, up to their usual quality. Um, so I'm really happy with that. Um, oh yeah, danger. 240 volt mains on this board. Yes. OK, um, now PCB is um, exactly as I've specified it. The bad thing about it is that um, I specified two errors to be incorporated into that PCB. Yeah, no, not deliberately. Of course not. Um, now, the first error that um, I found was when I was uh, I'd submitted the PCB, having checked it umpteen times. So it's not an electrical failure. It's more to do with the ESP32, this thing that I'm using. In fact, any ESP32. 
Right, how do you know out of all these pins which ones are safe to use and which not? Well, I use a crib sheet and um, here's my version, all right? Uh, but let's have a look at the version that I, I cribbed that crib sheet from on um, the internet. It's from Random Nerd Tutorials. He's he's very good. Um, the um, sheet I used was this one. So this is which pins are safe to use and which ones aren't, right? So I had a look down here. Well, you know, I printed all this off and all the rest of it. So I had a look down here, which ones were good, which ones weren't. And uh, one of the pins I chose was, in fact, pin two this one here and it goes yeah it's connected to the onboard led but that's it it's okay to use so i thought great i'll use it and i am using it on um, on my schematic and it all seemed okay except when i did some subsequent testing on my workbench over there whilst that pcb was being manufactured i discovered oh no mistake pin two Although it's a standard GPIO pin and is, yes, indeed connected to the, the nice blue LED on this device, if that pin is held high um, when you want to upload a new sketch, it don't work. It never gets into that bootloader mode. I thought, what is going on? So, of course, you know, a bit of investigation. The old Sherlock Holmes pipe came out. And what I hadn't read on that random nurse tutorial was this bit. Right, so right down the bottom of the page somewhere, it's called strapping pins, right? And it gives you all these pins here about if you set those particular pins to a particular state, you're going to stop your board going into that I can upload a new sketch um, state. And one of them, of course, is GPI2. Yeah. And what I've discovered on the Espressive website, then having found all this, I had to check it up. And Espressive say if you keep that high, uh, it won't go into bootloader mode. Guess what I'm doing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to make a change on the PCB now, which basically means cutting a track and wiring in it to a different uh, pin, one of the pins I've got on here. Uh, it's, it's not a showstopper, but uh, the pin output comes out here. I think it says water WTR, and it's connected to pin 2 there. And I've got to now connect it to pin 13 over here. Luckily, I've brought it out, so it's dead easy to get to. I just wire it in. That's not a problem. But there's another problem with this. And, well, let's put it this way. I'm in communication with LilyGo, the people who make these boards, right at the moment because i've said oi this is wrong isn't it and i could i could smack myself because i knew there was a problem with that but i'd forgotten all about it when i created my uh, smart workshop heater controller i had exactly the same problem found what the solution was and just just fiddled with it it was literally moving a jumper and it all worked and I forgot and it was a year ago when I did that now so you know it's not something I'm going to remember. Right that whole issue about the TXRX being flipped on the board um, was correct but not in the way I thought it was. My smart heater controller and my pond controller both use these boards right and there's another one here. All three have the same issue basically if we look underneath uh, underneath the left there, TXRX, they're actually the wrong way round in real life. It says TX at the top. No, that's actually wired to RX on the chip, and RX is wired to the TX on the chip, hence why I couldn't get any output from those devices until I'd flipped the pins. However, these ones, the LilyGo TTGo T7V 1.3, and I'm presuming, presuming 1.4 as well, um, they're absolutely fine. If you see here, top right, TXRX, um, absolutely wired in correctly to, to the chip. And of course, these follow this format. And I guess Wemos came up with the format first because they, they did this format for the ESP8266, which is um, what I use for my home alone project for my mum, right, in her flat. Uh, and they now made an ESP32 version of it, but got the pins wrong. Yeah, easy mistake to make. Well, actually, it might be an easy mistake to make, but obviously nobody tested it ever, did they? They've obviously wired it up to the USB OK, because that works. So it's obviously gone through the right pins there. 
Anyway, this one, the Lily Go TT Go T7, absolutely fine. And the reason I didn't use this initially is because it's actually got, uh, as you can see down here, a little on-off switch, because there's a battery, a rechargeable battery connector underneath. And I thought, well, I don't need any kind of rechargeable battery. It's a feature that would just go to waste on this project, so I'll keep that board for another time. And I used one of these. Yeah, I wish I hadn't now, really, quite frankly, with that error. But anyway, that's fixed, done, end of saga. So if I refer to it ever again in this video, just, just ignore it, okay? But, but don't buy a Wemos board and then moan when the TX and RX is reversed. It's pointless telling them, though, because I don't think Wemos exist anymore, aren't they? Aren't they bought out now by Lolin or something? Something went on there anyway. So, uh, apart from those two little hacks I've got to do on this board now to make sure that works, I've got to then sold all the bits in and it's it's pretty simple. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll have a look at the uh, circuit board when it's all done. But mainly it's sockets at the top, a couple of fuses, a couple of power supplies here, the actual ESP32. Yeah, I've gone overboard and put this massive great big LED thing. Where is it? Here it is. Now, I've had these lying about for absolutely ages, and they're driven not by shift registers, but by a Max 7219. Yeah, you've probably heard them driving um, those 8x8 um, segment LEDs before now. I've got my next project that I'm halfway through also is using exactly that. But for now, I thought these have been lying about in my box for the best part of five years. I'm going to make use of them. So these are going to be mounted somewhere and um, used um, just because I can really. It's not really providing much functionality, but what the hell. So there we are. I'm going to now put all this together and we'll see where we are then in about, um, I don't know, half a day or so. So here's the finished board all connected up. Um, obviously the software isn't written for it yet, but the little tiny sketch that I've got on tests out the uh, relays that you can hear clicking there. The uh, seven segment displays, my little dual digit monitor thing in the middle. Um, yeah, oh, and also the um, serial output via that FTDI, thanks to the little hack I had to do underneath. Yeah, it all seems to be hanging together. Okay, just a couple of little things just to round off this project, really, about why I made certain decisions. Um, I used this box because, well, uh, I had one. And you can get it with either a solid lid or a transparent lid. So having had the, um, well, the, the hassle, really, of having to cut out an aperture in the lid for my smart workshop heater controller, you know, trying to get it all lined up, you know, no. So I thought, well, transparent lid, ideal, isn't it? Especially as this is this is a utility type project. It's not something that's supposed to be in your face, you know, as part of the home. It's tucked under a shelf next to a, a socket, for goodness sake, to control a pond. So a transparent lid that shows all the gubbins inside is fine, in my humble opinion. So that's why I use this one. Um, also, the PCB that um, I had inside here... Um, wouldn't have fitted on these mounting lugs that you see inside because the PCB was limited to 100 by 100. Well, all right, I'm sure PCB way would have given me a much bigger PCB if I'd asked, but I thought, well, that's not really playing the game, isn't it? So I limited it to 100 by 100, which is what you guys would probably do, I think, to get that sort of uh, special price they offer. And I thought, well, all right, I can get a piece of board to fit inside here and fit on all these lugs or as many as I need and then screw the PCB to that, screw my relay board which is basically a, a dual version of this one here to it and there's all plenty of room and everything for the cabling. So that's what I did. Um, the board is in fact exactly 100 by 100. I drew it out first, the outline, and then made sure everything fitted inside. Initially I tried to get the relay boards on there as well, but not a chance, not a chance. So this is the uh, board I used, um, board type I used, I should say. It's a, it's a I think it's um, a 3mm plywood. It's quite, you know, it's solid. Uh, yeah, I can't bend it because it's a small piece. I mean, it's solid. Um, you can cut it to size exactly as I did. Screw it into those holes, which are easy to then do. And it's, you know, quite forgiving, isn't it, because it's wood. So I, I made myself a base plate, effectively, that fitted entirely inside here. Screwed the PCB to that and the relay board to that on standoffs. So it's all very secure and, and uh, 
easy to remove if I ever have to. And it turned out to be quite a cheap project. Yeah, not least because I wanted to use all the bits that I had already lined about my workshop to do this and perhaps even use a couple of bits up like that long seven segment display, which quite frankly, I had absolutely no use for elsewhere. So I thought, let's use it. Yeah. Uh, oh, and of course, in the software side of things, I'm using that timer. Anatoly Archipenko, was it? I think it was something like that, wasn't it? Using that partly, I, could, I think I could have used it some more, actually. I'm still doing stuff in the loop on a regular basis. I think hmm, I think I could have fired off a, another task here to execute every 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. But anyway, at least I'm using it. The fuses I used were three, no, they're not, they're two amp, quick blow, 250 volts. Incidentally, if you're interested in the fuse markings, what they all mean, now, there's a little thing I'll put that in the GitHub uh, up there. I'll put that in the GitHub um, because I I didn't know what I didn't know what FF meant. For example, very fast, uh, flink, flink, flink. Who's flink? I don't know. Anyway, so um, yeah, so now I know exactly what my fuses are, whether they're slow blow, fast, medium, whatever. Always useful to know that sort of thing, isn't it? Okay, I think that sort of wraps it up, really. I mean, obviously, if you're interested in the code, I'll, I will post the code as it is now. Of course, it might change over a, a period of time, but I think it's it's stable enough now. And, of course, it is very much web-based in the sense that my phone does all the work. I'll just give you a, a live demo of that now rather than screenshots, which is what you saw before. There's the pond controller, that one there. There we are. Uh, now, there's two um, variants of this, really. If you use the admin version, you get this sort of table down here as well that tells me all the things that's going on, whereas my wife has absolutely no interest in all this, of course. She just wants to be able to turn the pump off and then back on again. So we can we can press that. You might have heard it click at the back there. Yeah, and it will turn back on in 10 minutes if we don't do anything. Uh, so we can turn it back on again, uh, which I will do because it's supposed to be on this time of day. And it will stay on until the next hour. And there we are, back again. Cool, yeah. That looks amazingly like my cat, that face. Okay, I think we're done. I better leave while the going's good. Anyway, if you've got any comments or questions about what I did, perhaps in detail, which I know I haven't gone into, because it'd just be too much, wouldn't it? But if you've got specific details, how did you do this or why did you do that? What's your decision-making process for a certain bit of it? Let me know. Put it in the comments below. Yeah. And if you liked it, give me a like. Yeah, because I want that. Yay. Hey. Yeah, that one. And uh, remember, if you like these sort of videos, subscribe and tick the bell. Ding, ding. Because if you don't tick the bell, you don't get notified even though you're subscribed. Crazy, isn't it? What's the point of subscribing? Uh, yeah, I know. Let's all moan to YouTube about that. It's a two-stage process. But there we are. Great stuff. See you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.